Decades of studies from respected academic institutions have demonstrated significant impacts of porn consumption for individuals, relationships, and society. Our Get the Facts resource features 15 articles that summarize relevant research on a specific topic surrounding porn's harms to help you be more informed and more empowered with the facts. Read all 15 Get the Facts articles at ftnd.org forward slash get the facts. That's ftnd.org forward slash get the facts. My name is Garrett Johnson, and you're listening to Consider Before Consuming, a podcast by Fight the New Drug. And in case you're new here, Fight the New Drug is a non-religious and non-legislative organization that exists to provide individuals the opportunity to make an informed decision regarding pornography by raising awareness on its harmful effects using only science, facts, and personal accounts. During these episodes, we cover a wide variety of topics that may be triggering to some. Listener discretion is advised. Welcome to part nine of our Get the Facts series, where we explore the research on a specific topic surrounding porn's harms on individuals, relationships, and society to help you become more informed and empowered with the facts. Today's episode is how porn can distort consumers' understanding of healthy sex. You can find the sources to the claims made in this episode or read along at ftnd.org forward slash get the facts. Now, let's get to the episode. Imagine what would happen if your school's health class was taught by a cigarette salesman. Chances are you wouldn't hear about lung cancer or how much shorter the typical smoker's lifespan is. He might even try to tell you that smoking could boost your sprint time. Sounds ridiculous, right? But that's the kind of education countless people are getting about sex every day. While porn is often called adult material, many of its consumers are well under the legal age. Studies show that most young people are exposed to porn by age 13, and according to a nationally representative survey of U.S. teens, 84% of 14- to 18-year-old males and 57% of 14- to 18-year-old females have viewed pornography. That means that most young people are getting at least some of their education about sex from porn whether they mean to or not. In fact, one study shows that approximately 45% of teens who consumed porn did so in part to learn about sex. Similarly, survey results also show one in four 18 to 24-year-olds listed pornography as the most helpful source to learn how to have sex. Pornography is actively spreading harmful misinformation about sex, In fact, one study suggests that the more someone consumes porn, the more sexually illiterate they tend to become. It's no secret that porn is wildly unrealistic and often incredibly toxic, yet survey results also showed that over half of 11 to 16-year-old boys and over a third of 11 to 16-year-old girls reported believing that pornography was a realistic depiction of sex and 44% of boys who watched porn reported that online pornography gave them ideas about the type of sex they wanted to try. Just like cigarette commercials often show healthy people puffing away rather than showing the cancer-causing potential, porn is frequently offering a completely warped and unrealistic idea of what healthy sex and relationships are really like. According to a 2021 study, One out of every eight porn titles shown to first-time visitors to porn sites described acts of sexual violence. And according to studies analyzing the content of porn videos themselves, it's estimated that at least one in three videos and as many as nine in ten videos show acts of physical aggression or violence, while 48%, about half, contain verbal aggression. These studies also found that despite the levels of violence and aggression, the targets were almost always portrayed as responding with pleasure or neutrality. What type of message does that send to young people who turn to porn to learn about sex? Porn is primarily produced for entertainment purposes, not education. But the ideas porn sells are not conducive to a healthy understanding of sex, sexuality, or mutual pleasure. In fact, 
Research confirms that women are the targets of aggression or violence in porn about 97% of the time, and that only 18% of women in popular porn videos, compared to 78% of men, were shown to reach climax. And of course, one of the most consistent popular porn themes is teen, which research shows is becoming increasingly popular and includes the portrayal of underage characters. In addition to the abusive behaviors consistently shown in porn, porn often promotes a number of other problematic sexual narratives. Porn sites are full of videos that not only portray but normalize and fetishize incest, unequal power dynamics, and a variety of situations where marginalized or vulnerable people are abused or taken advantage of. For example, porn often presents sexual orientation or gender identity as a fetish, dehumanizing those who are not cisgender or heterosexual, rather than normalizing them as people, deserving of equal love and respect. Whether using degrading slurs to describe transgender people or the common theme of girl-on-girl, content that's actually catered to the male gaze, Porn regularly exploits those in the LGBTQ plus community. Additionally, porn often depicts and profits from blatantly racist narratives. According to researchers who performed a content analysis of more than 1,700 scenes from two of the world's most popular porn sites, videos featuring black people disproportionately emphasize violence and aggression perpetuate harmful racist stereotypes, and often depict black people as worse than objects. The porn industry often fetishizes race, reducing people of color to sexual categories that often focus on damaging stereotypes. Dr. Carolyn West, an expert on domestic violence and cultural sensitivity, has taught courses on human sexuality for more than 20 years. Discussing the porn industry's history of perpetuating racism against the black community, she explains, and I quote, It doesn't take long to stumble upon any number of racist titles that promote offensive and unwarranted racial stereotypes. She continues, The porn industry appears to get a free pass to promote horrifically racist and abusive content in the name of sexual entertainment to anyone with internet access, even children. End quote. Some people argue that it's not a big deal, it's just fantasy. But research shows that porn's influence can and does find its way into young people's sexual expectations and behaviors. For example, a recent poll found that the more porn a man consumes, the more likely he is to be dissatisfied with his penis size. And the same goes for women with male partners. The more porn they consume, the less satisfied they are with their partner's penis size. Research also consistently demonstrates that porn consumption is a significant predictor of sexual aggression. Studies also suggest that increased pornography consumption is associated with the enjoyment of degrading, uncommon, or aggressive sexual behaviors. Another study indicated that teens often reported trying to copy porn in their own sexual encounters, and the pressure to imitate porn was often an aspect of unhealthy relationships. And according to a UK survey of over 22,000 adult women, 16% reported having been forced or coerced to perform sex acts the other person had seen in porn. But just as harmful as the things porn shows is what it doesn't show. Pornography doesn't give an accurate picture of what healthy sex is like. It cuts out important things like consent, communication, foreplay, and other ways partners are responsive to each other's needs and preferences. For example, a study of adolescents in Australia found that a significantly higher proportion of respondents reported frequently seeing violence than those who reported frequently seeing romance or affection when they watched pornography during the previous 12 months. Respondents also reported that they frequently saw behaviors that are demeaning to women, such as ejaculation onto the face of a woman, violence against women that appears consensual, slurs directed at women, and women gagging during oral sex. The researchers concluded that their findings, and I quote, 
raise interesting questions for future studies with young people about the way that they perceive both violence and pleasure in pornography and how seeing these behaviors in pornography influences their own understanding of sex and sexuality. End quote. Many young people's expectations regarding sex have been affected by porn without even realizing it. As one young woman related to us when talking about being sexually intimate with her partner, and I quote, We were having sex when, out of nowhere, he spit on me. I didn't know how to react. He was embarrassed when he saw that he wasn't getting the reaction he was expecting. What he'd seen in porn had created unrealistic expectations of what sex would be like. He saw people do things to each other and get certain reactions and assumed they'd transfer into real life, end quote. When it comes to the consequences of sexual acts portrayed in pornography, there are often two extremes. Most porn falls into the first extreme, which ignores any potential negative consequences of sexual behavior, a lack of consent, or not using sexual protection and contraceptives. However, at the other extreme are videos where the pain of those portrayed in videos is glamorized, even if people on screen are shown becoming upset. These videos eroticize and glorify sexual violence, and consequences such as skin tearing, bruising, prolapsed anuses, sexually transmitted infections, or unplanned pregnancies are often portrayed as trophies or evidence of the violence and domination inflicted upon the performers. As a sexologist at the Reykjavik Department of Education and Youth has stated, and I quote, I believe, and research backs it, that material that children see online affects their ideas on sex. We need to react before the damage is done, and we need to prevent children from seeing something online that might harm them or give them delusions, end quote. Porn isn't just entertainment. It isn't just intended for arousal. Whether intentionally or not, it teaches toxic messages that can have real-world consequences. The research is clear. Porn can warp consumers' ideas about sex and relationships. But the good news is that we can limit those negative effects by raising awareness on this issue, especially to young people. So let's refocus on healthy relationships and reject the toxic narratives porn perpetuates. Let's consider the facts before consuming. For those listening who feel they are struggling with pornography, you're not alone. Check out Fortify, a science-based recovery platform dedicated to helping you find lasting freedom from pornography. Fortify now offers a free experience for both teens and adults. Connect with others, learn about your unwanted porn habit, and track your recovery journey. There is hope. If you've enjoyed listening to Consider Before Consuming, consider making a one-time or recurring donation to support the podcast. Your contribution, whatever the amount, helps support our efforts to educate individuals on the impacts of pornography. Help keep this podcast going by donating to Consider Before Consuming today at ftnd.org forward slash support. That's ftnd.org forward slash support. Thanks for joining us on this episode of Consider Before Consuming. Consider Before Consuming is brought to you by Fight the New Drug. Fight the New Drug is a non-religious and non-legislative organization that exists to provide individuals the opportunity to make an informed decision regarding pornography by raising awareness on its harmful effects using only science, facts, and personal accounts. If you've enjoyed listening to Consider Before Consuming, consider subscribing and leaving a review. Again, big thanks to you for listening to this episode. As you go about your day, we invite you to increase your self-awareness, look both ways, check your blind spots, and consider before consuming. <laughs>